another first timer is about to step up here. A damn Yankee because he came to Roanoke and never left. You might know him as the percussionist in so many local bands or that guy on the electric one wheel. From managing Valley Eye Repair, which is the best iPhone repair store ever, where he fixes your phone after you drop it in the toilet, to squashing, <laughs> to squashing tyranny of the British crown. He has been called a lot, but in Roanoke, he is beloved and known as Jeff Maiden. <laughs> Anybody out there? Okay. In 2008, I was 28 years old, and I didn't have a lot of money. I had a lot of time. So I get a phone call from a Jim Baldwin. That name's probably familiar to a few of you. Yes, yes. Now, Jimmy calls me. He'd been two weeks down in Rock Hill, South Carolina, on location, lo location as a movie extra in a movie called the Patriot, so, starring Mel Gibson, right? Big deal. And so he'd been down there shooting on location and the directors were desperate for new faces, for fresh faces, right? This was nearing the end of the movie and they needed some fresh faces. And he said, he said Jeff, they're, they're paying $100 a day. $100 a day for extras. Come on down, man, we need you. So I had a buddy who also had lots of time and not much money. And so we scooted on down there and pulled in at nightfall, camped out and woke up in the morning to like hundreds of extras milling around, stinking and looking like they had been camping for two weeks. <laughs> so we go and we sign up, right? So we go to this tent and get in a long line. And at the front of this line is this guy, this little guy with the little glasses and a clipboard. And so we're in line, and Jimmy leans down and he says, hey, I think I figured out how to get you guys $150 instead of 100 <laughs> Next! You know, and that's clipboards. And so we, we take a step up, and now we're starting to get closer. And I'm like, what, what do you mean 150 bucks? I mean, that sounds good, I need money. And he says, I'm gonna sign you up as reenactors. <laughs> Next! You know, we're getting closer and I'm thinking, what do you mean reenactors? He said, you're going to have historical, I'm going to say you have historical knowledge and you're going to get more because you're a reenactor. <laughs> Next! Right? So now we're getting closer and I'm thinking, so on my father's side of the family, I actually do have historical relevance. I've got a guy in my father's side of the family who's actually an alternate signer to the Declaration of Independence. And his son actually commanded troops in the Battle of Trenton under George Washington. So I'm like, this is in my blood. I belong here, damn it. But a historian? I am not. So now I'm starting to panic, right? And Jimmy leans in, he's like, don't worry, don't worry. It's okay, I'm gonna tell him you guys are, are experts in 1600s English Civil War, Cromwell period. He said, no one knows that stuff anyway. But Jim, and I'm like, I'm thinking, I, I didn't even know there was an English Civil War. <laughs> Next, yells clipboard, right? So we're like, okay, now we're up, and I take a big deep boop, you know, and I stand up there, and Jimmy says, these two fellows, and if you know Jim Baldwin, he's six foot six, 350 pounds. He has a huge beard and even bigger personality. And he said, you know, these guys there, they're experts in their field. And he says, sells it, sells it good. And now Clipboard, he's looking above his glasses at us. And he looks me up and down, he looks my buddy up and down, and he looks at Jim Baldwin way up there. And I, you can just see on his face. It was just screaming, I didn't know there was an English Civil War either. <laughs> so he, he signs the paper, and we move on. An hour in makeup 
and hair and costumes. I look about like this. We get on a bus and we drive on down to a movie set. Now, I don't know if you've ever been to a movie set before, but OMG. Big motion picture like this with moon. It was incredible. We were on this hilltop and there was, looked like hundreds of tents, period specific tents that these um, colonial infantry guys would have slept in. And then on the border of all these tents were massive cannons. I mean, a row of just enormous cannons on these, these foundations. And in between the tents and the cannons was a dirt road that winded its way up. And far down in the distance was armies. I mean, a marching army in the distance, because this is a milk, you know, you gotta see an army. And there was like dozens of guys on horseback. Okay, so the first scene takes an hour for everybody to get into places and set up. And there's this guy with a walkie-talkie, and walkie-talkie is not very, you know, he's not a nice guy, let me put it that way. And walkie-talkie comes over to myself and three other guys, and he said, all right, guys, this is the deal. Mel and the French general and a militia group are gonna be walking up this way, up this dirt road, and in the distance, we're gonna have the armies marching, and you and these three guys are gonna be walking, crisscrossing right in front of Mel Gibson, marching on our way to the front to fight, right? That's, that's the idea. So my, myself, and I'm the back of the three. So we're marching like this. So that's the idea. Everybody's in position, everybody's ready to go. Action! And everything starts bustling and moving, and people are, you know, things are happening. And I'm, we're waiting for our cue. And there's walkie talkies hanging out behind his tent. And the time comes, and he waves us on. And we start just to march, right? All in sync like this. And we get up to the dirt road, and here's Mel coming up. And the first guy crosses, the second guy crosses. But then I come up to the, by the time I get there, there's Mel Gibson. He's right in front of me. And I got options, right? <laughs> One of them is to keep marching. <laughs> it didn't seem like a good idea at the time. Or to run around in front, but the camera, also a bad idea. So I hooked the left and went down, you know, down flanking. Cut, 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 cut. Back in position. Now, I look over and walkie talkies getting an earful. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Now, walkie talkie comes over to me. He says, he says, well, first of all, where does shit flow? <laughs> Downhill. So I'm thinking, this is not my fault, right? You didn't cue me right. And he, but no, according to him, it was my fault. Yeah. So we're going to try it again. Right? So we try to get everybody back in position. Mel's back in position. Army's back in position. Cue up. We go. I'll be damned if the same thing didn't happen. First guy crosses. Second guy crosses. I again have decisions to make. And again, I think the best one is to flank and go down. Now walkie talkies really getting an earful from upstairs. And shit is flowing downhill, baby. So Walkie Talkie's giving it to me, and he says, we're gonna give it another try. So an hour later, oh, and by the way, Walkie Talkie leans in and he says, this is $10,000 a take. You do realize that, don't you? Anybody doing math? <laughs> an hour later, the army's back in position. The guys in horseback are, are back. Everybody's back in position, the camera crew. Walkie Talkie is now hiding behind that tent, and he isn't looking at us, he's looking at Mel, because he's got to get it right too. And he clues us a little bit better, a little bit earlier, and we start marching. And baby, I, I gotta tell you, I'm feeling like the weight of the world, like the success of this major motion picture rests entirely on these shoulders. I'm feeling like my family's name is on the line and it's go time. So I'm in character and I am damn determined to make this right. So we start a march. We're going. We're marching through. Up comes Mel. The first guy goes. The second guy goes. The third guy, me, crosses in front of Mel. We did it. 
I couldn't believe it. We got across. I was feeling so, so enthusiastic. I had done it, guys. I had done it. I turned around, and the guy in front of me and I are going in for a high five, and all of a sudden he stops, and his eyes get wide, and he scowls, and he looks at me, and he pokes me right between the eyes. I had my Oakleys on. I died. I died inside. I died. And I took the glasses off, I hid them in my haversack, and I disappeared into the, the rest of the... The rest of the extras. I'm sorry, reenactors. Now, there were no repercussions. I think I blended in and we went on to the next scene. I, I don't know what happened. What I do know is that on opening day, I went to that movie and I didn't see that scene. It must have been left on the cutting room floor. It wasn't there. But I did find myself. <laughs> that is me. They had me do like doing a wicker basket, like basket weaving. <laughs> but that is me. So that is the story of how it cost the producers of The Patriot $30,000. And to my ancestors, I'm profoundly sorry.